Welcome to today's ILTA YouTube video, how to create a chatbot driven knowledge base in SharePoint. My name is Amit Patney and I'm a solution architect at Microsoft and I will be demonstrating how to build a bot in Copilot Studio, how to configure the, the security parameters in Power Platform and Azure so that this bot is able to utilize SharePoint as a knowledge source. I will also show how the user interaction would work with this bot. I will cover these topics in a series of three videos and today's topic will be on how to provision the bot in Copilot Studio. Please be sure to look out for the follow-up videos where I will cover security and user interaction and then finally how to publish the bot so that your end users can actually use it. Okay, with that out of the way, let's start building our bot. On your browser, please navigate to copilotstudio.microsoft.com. You will need to log in with your company's M365 credentials. And if you don't have a license for Copilot Studio, you can sign up for a trial using the link on the screen. For those of us who are not able to sign up for a free trial, but would still like to try out what the bot conversation experience looks like, you can do that by following this link. Please be aware that this is a limited experience option and will not let you connect it to your SharePoint site but you can still try out the generative AI conversation experience. Just follow the steps outlined in the Try It website by entering any publicly available website and start asking your questions. The bot would use that website as the knowledge source and so long as that website has content related to the questions you are going to ask, it should be able to find a contextual answer for you. I'll briefly show this experience before we go to the full-blown Copilot Studio building option. I'm going to enter a website. In this case, it's support.microsoft.com and accept the terms. And I'll ask the bot a simple question. In this case, let's go with uh, my surf, surface, oh, can't spell, surface laptop battery is not charging. And it's okay if you make some spelling mistakes, uh, the bot is intelligent enough to correct it. As you can see, my laptop's not spelled right. I'll leave it the way it is. My options, what are my options? And the bot comes back with, um, with the response using the website that I provided. It crafts a response in natural language and also provides me reference links to the websites from where it found the answer. As you can see from the citations, if I hover over them uh, and you look at the bottom left hand corner, it shows you what those links are and how it crafted that response. So I can use any one of these three um, reference links or citations to go about helping myself. All right, this is it for the limited experience. Let's switch back over to our full-blown um, Copilot Studio bot building option. Once logged into Copilot Studio, please go ahead and select any of the provided out-of-the-box templates. I'll highlight them here. 
for your bot building experience. And if a template doesn't match, you can simply describe up here what you would like your bot to do and Copilot Studio will build it for you. We've added a Copilot within Copilot Studio to help in accelerating the build process. All you need to do is say what your bot would uh, or what your bot would like to do or what you what you would like for your bot to do and copilot uh, copilot studio will build the bot for you for now i'm going to start with a provided template using the help desk one and hit send you can read the instructions what the uh, what the help desk option is um, filling in for me it says provide employees with help on troubleshooting issues with their company issued devices and now we are in the build process in just a second it says okay so i i'm, I'm going to get this started for you do you have any instructions on how your co-pilot or your bot should assist your users for example would you want to give your bot a specific tone using the tone option you can give your bot a persona and let it know how it should interact with your end users for some examples i'll leave a link here of what that option looks like These are the instructions that I'm going to use. Format the response as a series of steps, starting each step with step one, step two, etc. Don't use number list. Each step must be bolded. Now, because this is a help desk scenario, I've chosen to use this one, but you are free to use any others from the example that I shared, example link that I shared or any other way that you would like for your bot to have a persona. So let's hit send. And in just a few moments, I should now have an option which says, hey, where should Copilot find important information? So basically at this step, we are asking for a knowledge source. So in this case, I'm going to use that same support.microsoft.com as my knowledge source and later on I will add my internal um, SharePoint site as its knowledge source but we can't do that yet I as I um, haven't configured all the required security um, um, settings and the next thing we need to do is um, let the bot know about any topics or tasks that this that this copilot shouldn't help um, help your end users with or maybe even talk about for example hey don't talk about politics or religion uh, this gives your bot an out I'll use uh, when the user asks a question you might include uh, or res might let's say respond you might you can respond with not found if the answer isn't present also also stay away from discussing politics or 
Now I'm just doing this for fun. You can make it any which way you'd like. And that's about it. Uh, we should be ready to um, ready to create a bot. I will select create. We can add additional options um, from the advanced settings. If you'd like to modify things like where the um, where this bot solution should reside, we're not going to get into that topic today. Um, but here are some options that you can change so that. All of this gets packaged up into a simple solution, which you can then put into different environments. Again, we're not touching any of those today. So at this point, let's go ahead and hit create. And this should take a few moments for the bot process, uh, for the bot creation to complete. Okay. My bot got successfully provisioned. Now we're ready to use this um, this Copilot bot. I can test it out in the right hand side of my screen. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to turn off this option of allow the AI to use its own general knowledge. Um, I want my bot to only answer questions from the knowledge source I've indicated. If you'd like to learn more about what this means, you can click on the learn more option. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and disable the default AI knowledge option. It's asking, asking me for a confirmation. So let's go ahead and do that. And in just a few seconds, it should disable it. Um, at this point, we are ready to uh, to test our bot to see how it would uh, appear once it has been published. At this point, we haven't published the bot. We've only created, um, so it's still not accessible to our end users. So um, let's go ahead and ask it the same question I did with the limited experience that I shared before my surface laptops battery is not charging what are my options just a few seconds it should come back with the response again using that same um, support.microsoft.com as its um, as its reference point. As you can see, I did not create any topics, uh, so this is this is purely uh, generated generative AI um, in in action at the moment. I did not have to create the step by step. Um, uh, things on how a end users uh, end user is going to get um, help from this bot. If you remember in my instructions, I had said, respond back to the users as step one, step two, step three, and so on, and make sure the that those steps are uh, as in, in bold. So the bot uh, took those instructions and crafted the response as such. From the citations, again, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen as I hover over this link and the next two or three links, you'll notice that the response, again, came back from that same support.microsoft.com website. If I click into any of these, these links, it'll bring me contextually to exactly where it found a response. Let's try a couple more. As I click into them, I can now go about troubleshooting my Surface device battery um, uh, not charging. And these are again reference buildings. Notice how it also crafted a response using those knowledge source, but again, gave that response back to me 
in natural language, again, all without having to, uh, to create these topics or to code these topics into my bot. And that's the power of generative AI uh, that is now readily available for you to A, create your bots and then finally to publish so that your end users can come back um, and, and ask questions from the knowledge sources that you're going to use for, uh, for your bots. This concludes our first session of uh, building Copilot Studio bots and connecting them to SharePoint. In the second follow-up video, I will connect or create the security settings so that we will be able to connect this, um, this bot to an internal SharePoint site. As you can imagine, uh, we do want to make sure those security parameters, um, the access settings that you put into SharePoint are also respected by the bot so that it doesn't respond uh, to a user's query if the, if the user who will be using the bot does not have access to the underlying data, in this case being that SharePoint site. So we'll configure the security settings in the second video. And then finally, in the last uh, video in the series, I will go ahead and publish the bot and then show you what the user and user interaction is going to look like. So be on the lookout for those. For now, thank you for your time. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.